hope you had a very Merry Christmas Day. For much of the world, Christmas 2021 is already just a memory. But as Catholics, we're really just halfway through the octave of Christmas, so we're really blessed. Today's gospel reading finds us in the Jerusalem temple where Mary and Joseph have taken their young son so that he can be consecrated to the Lord according to the law of Moses. As they enter the temple, they meet two elderly people who have been waiting for the Savior for a very long time, Simeon and Anna. In 2015, Pope Francis spoke at length about Simeon and Anna and the vocation of seniors to pray. And I'll read from some, this was a catechesis he gave. The gospel comes to meet us with a really moving and encouraging image. It's the image of Simeon and Anna, whom are spoken of in the gospel of Jesus' childhood, composed by St. Luke. They were certainly elderly, the old man Simeon and the prophetess Anna, who was 84 years old. The gospel says that they awaited the coming of God every day with great trust for many years. They truly wanted to see him that day, to grasp the signs, to understand the origin. By then, they were also perhaps more resigned to die first. That long wait, however, continued to occupy their whole life, having no commitments more important than this, to await the Lord and to pray. So when Mary and Joseph went to the temple to fulfill the provisions of the law, Simeon and Anna moved quickly, inspired by the Holy Spirit. The burden of age and waiting disappeared in an instant. They recognized the child and discovered a new strength for a new task. To give thanks for and bear witness to this sign from God. Simeon improvised a beautiful hymn of jubilation. In that moment, he was a poet and Anna became the first woman to preach of Jesus. She spoke of him to all who were looking for the redemption of Jerusalem. I'll continue with the Holy Father's text. It's really beautiful. Dear grandparents, dear elderly, let us follow in the footsteps of these extraordinary elders. Let us too become like poets of prayer. Let us develop a taste for finding our own words. Let us once again grasp those which which teach us the word of God. The prayer of grandparents and of the elderly is a great gift for the church. Yes, the prayer of grandparents and of the elderly is a great gift for the church. It is a treasure. A great injection of wisdom for the whole of human society, above all, for one which is too busy, too taken, and too distracted. Someone should also sing for them too, sing of the signs of God, proclaim the signs of God, pray for them. Let us look to Pope Benedict XVI, who chose to spend the final span of his life in prayer and listening to God. This is beautiful. A great believer of the last century of the Orthodox tradition, Olivier Clément said, a civilization which has no place for prayer is a civilization in which old age has lost all meaning. And this is terrifying, for above all, we need old people who pray. Prayer is the purpose of old age. We need old people who pray because this is the very purpose of old age. The prayer of the elderly is a beautiful thing. The Holy Father spoke about several types of prayer thanksgiving, intercession, and purification of the heart. We are able to thank the Lord for the benefits received, he said, and feel the emptiness of ingratitude that surrounds us. We are able to intercede for the expectations of younger generations and give dignity to the memory and sacrifice of past generations. We are able to remind ambitious young people that a life without love is a barren life. We are able to say to young people who are afraid that anxiety about the future can be overcome. We are able to teach the young who are overly self-absorbed that there is more joy in giving than in receiving. Grandfathers and grandmothers form the enduring chorus of a great spiritual sanctuary where prayers of supplication and songs of praise sustain the community which toils and struggles in the field of life. 
And I was thinking that these words might really be a good fit for some of you in these days between Christmas and New Year's. You've spent time with your families and no doubt while there were many happy moments, there might have also been moments of discord or moments when family members confided uh, preoccupations, anxieties, or sorrows to you, when you might have been disappointed in seeing the direction that some of your younger families have taken with their lives. And so how important it is that you can offer prayers of intercession on their behalf and kind of lift them up and even rescue them from um, the fog they may be lost in in today's world. Last, our Holy Father said, prayer unceasingly purifies the heart. Praise and supplication to God prevents the heart from becoming hardened by resentment and selfishness. How awful is the cynicism of an elderly person who has lost the meaning of his testimony, who scorns the young and does not communicate the wisdom of life. I'm sure none of you were like this over Christmas. How beautiful, however, is the encouragement of an elderly person manages to pass on to a young person who is seeking the meaning of faith and of life. It is truly the mission of grandparents, the vocation of the elderly. The words of grandparents have special value for the young and the young know it. I still carry with me, always in my bravery, the words my grandmother consigned to me in writing on the day of my priestly ordination. I read them often and they do me good. Pope Francis concluded his words that day with a wish. How I would like a church that challenges the throwaway culture with the overflowing joy of a new embrace between young and old. This is what I ask of the Lord today, this embrace. This is my wish for the new year as well, that we would see a new embrace between the young and the old. I know many young people are eager to make a difference in the world. And uh, while much of what I said today was really for older people, I'll close now with some words of encouragement for younger people. I know that you wanna make a difference in the world and I would just encourage you to consider making that difference with seniors by reaching out to your own, the seniors in your own family, your grandparents, elderly aunts and uncles, whatever, and, and elderly neighbors by seeing how you can serve them and make a difference in their lives. And by considering careers that are at the service of older uh, people, there's such a shortage already in society of qualified caregivers in the medical and health professions. And I'm sure in professions of advocacy and social services, um, you know, the population is aging so rapidly. And so I would encourage you, if you want to make a difference, consider going into a profession where you would be at the service of seniors this is where you can make a real difference. And I have to make a pitch. I can't close without making a pitch for vocations. If you feel, especially if you're a young woman and you feel that God may be asking you to give your life to him, and you also feel a certain attraction to the elderly or a certain love for them that you feel is, is really deep in your heart, please give me a call call any of our little sister homes around the country and we'll be more than happy to accompany you in your discernment. So I'll close there, wishing all of you a very happy and healthy new year of 2022. I hope and pray that this will be our last COVID Christmas and next year um, we'll all be free to celebrate as we would really wish free of that anxiety. So again, happy new year to you and to all those you love. May it be a happy, healthy and blessed year for all of us.